sometimes the best things are hidden. <laughs> so today, I'm taking you on a special, special visit to one of the most exclusive hotels in the Dominican Republic. As you can see, it's tucked away uh, in a little hidden jungly area, but it's a treasure. So here we are at the gate. Wait and see what's inside. I think you're gonna like it. Look at this, you guys. You don't get access with everybody, but with Free Island Girl, you do. <laughs> Here we go. Need a good car to get up these hills. Good traction, guys. Not for the faint of heart. Beautiful, isn't it? And look, we have arrived. This is just the outside. Where do you see what's in there? This is the Peninsula House. It's not a hotel, it's a guest house. It's got only six rooms, five of them have king beds, one has two singles, so the total occupancy in this gorgeous place is only 12 people. There are no children allowed unless you rent the whole home, which you can do, but in any event, only 12 guests at a time are allowed here. Let's take a look inside. Okay, so I'm sitting here right now. I'm thrilled to be here at the Peninsula House, um, and I've been sitting here with Thomas, who is one of the owners. I want you to know that if you could just feel the way it feels for this location, it's absolutely beautiful. It's exponentially tranquil. Thomas, first of all, thank you so much for allowing me to come and spend a little time here today. Um, what can you tell us about this home and the influences? Well, it's, it's a family home. Uh, my mother and her partner, Carrie, they met in the south of France many years ago, actually on a blind date, so that by the record, <laughs> oh, the hotel. Oh, you see, you never know. <laughs> um, and they were a bit bored and they, they wanted to do something different, move out of France, and uh, a friend of, us, friend of theirs came here, and uh, they came here and just fell in love with the nature. This was about 20 years ago now, um, and they built their dream home, um, but they wanted something which felt as if it had been here for a very long time, um, and they built this amazing property with a difference of styles, colonial, Victorian, taking I did from the uh, colonial zone in the capital with the inner patio. Um, we took a trip down to Charleston and S S South Carolina and Georgia and so on to get ideas for the balustrades, the gingerbreads, um, and uh, combined it with their own personal taste, their own furniture, and built their dream house. And uh, the idea was to have a hobby and do sort of a B and B type of idea, which then sort of grew and became a lot bigger than we expected. Yeah, it's and, quite a uh, B&B, let me tell you. <laughs> um, and so I would now consider us a guest house with a different idea of luxury, as I mentioned uh, mm -hmm. earlier, where luxury is always being at home. And the idea is we want to make people feel at home, give them the privacy and the comfort of being at home without ever sacrificing uh, the quality of service of a uh, high-end uh, property. Um, true luxury here is Kosom Beach, nine kilometer beach, where 90% of the year you can walk for 20 minutes and not see another human being. Um, yeah, it's nice very, to get away. There are very few places in the world that like that. And at the same time, we're 10 minutes away from Las Terrenas, which has 120 bars, clubs, restaurants, um, multicultural, cosmopolitan yeah. society. Um, to get that sort of that dichotomy, those, those two things brought together is so rare. Um, and that is the true luxury of Las Terrenas and Samana in general, is uh, the pure beauty and, nat and luxury of the nature. Tell us about, if you don't mind, a little bit of the influences that are here in the Peninsula House. From Is there, there art from different parts of the world? Or how did so, that happen? So it's mostly linked through where my family has lived, where we've traveled. Mm -hmm. uh, my father lives in India for 15 years. Uh, my mother was raised in Algeria. Uh, they spent 11 years in Istanbul, then 13 years in South Africa. So it's a collection of all our pasts, our travels, where we've lived, our grandparents as well. Mm -hmm. Carrie's American, he's from Aspen. Uh, what he's brought in, he's an artist himself, so mm -hmm. there's a lot of art 
um, of his uh, in the house. He's also the chef. Oh, nice. Um, it's a mix of our histories and uh, it's 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 our we live in it it's our house it's a and so so you live here you mentioned mm -hmm. and so there are about three of you who are here full-time mm -hmm. you mentioned carrie is a chef um and you also said that when you need to jump in and do something it's not just waiting for the staff to do it so um there are many i've, I've spoken before about some of the people who come to this country we talked about this and expats will come off into other countries and sort of take advantage and feel like they can just sort of have their way but what i've enjoyed about learning from you today is that you appreciate the fact that we are guests here in this country mm -hmm. and that you know he will do what he has to do <laughs> something needs to get done you don't feel like you're above it no. um there's staff here who've lived uh, li lives here some live on, mm -hmm. on site and worked for most of their lifetime it sounds like most, we don't have any seasonal staff um i said earlier my head housekeeper she was a housekeeper when we were renting a property here before we'd even bought this property and started wow. building it mm -hmm. her son who was four years old at the time is now 19 20 is now the waiter at night her sister's a turn down service her sister's daughter is the waitress at the beach club okay. um, we don't do seasonal employees um, it's full-time and it's because the idea is when you're a guest in the country it's adapting learning and becoming part of the community okay. and helping them out and I think one of the biggest uh, misconceptions is that when you change countries, people say you have to adapt. Yes, of course you have to adapt. But you can still adapt, keep your same standard levels, and actually teach people and bring them up. Not blow yourself down to meet the country level, but actually teach and, and bring something positive to uh, a certain generation which they can pass down to other parts of the community. Right. Um, um, how many other languages do you speak? Uh, fluently four. Okay. Uh, can get away with seven. Does sarcasm count? <laughs> <laughs> I think so, right? <laughs> Sometimes you need that, exactly. right? Yeah, and you know, thank you. We're having a little... Uh, cheers? Cheers. Thank salud. you. Yeah, salud. Um, and I mentioned the languages because s'il y a des gens qui ne parlent pas anglais, s'il y a gente qui parle seulement espagnol, can all come here. Todo pueden venir aquí. Exactly. So Nicole, who's our uh, day manager, so she speaks French, German, uh, English, and Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, Luca at the beach club, he's Italian, Brazilian, mm -hmm. speaks Spanish, English. Uh, um, we try and make everyone as comfortable as possible. Yeah. At the same time, it's fun for people to try and learn a different language Absolutely. and try out different things. And yeah. um, it's I know. I've been blessed uh, through my family to have parents from different nationalities and different mm -hmm. countries. Um, but it's, you know, whatever it is, you try and adapt and uh, make the best of it. And sometimes what's been wonderful with the, such a small hotel, we get to meet every single guest personally. Right. Right. And sometimes we don't speak a word together, but over a few glasses of wine or a few rums, by the end of the night, <laughs> we're having a full-on conversation. Absolutely, <laughs> so, right, right. Some things don't need can, to be said. You, know, you, can, uh, you can work it out. And I think that's uh, that's also, I think, the big difference with our property compared to um, in our property. We only have six rooms, which is possibly not the best business plan in the world, but in terms of in the hotel business, an absolute luxury. Absolutely. And the idea of trying to get to know each client and understanding what they want from their holiday mm -hmm. When you get it right, giving it, give them what they want from the holiday before they even know they want it. Yeah. Um, Anticipating yeah, the needs. Exactly. Yeah. The idea is in 10 years, the clients don't say, we stayed in a nice property on a nice island. Right. It's they remember Nicole, or Luca at the beach, sure. or Robert at night, or myself. Something a bit more personal, something a bit more intimate, um, more tailor-made. Okay. Thank you so much again. Um, I'm going to give you guys another peek around the property. I think you're going to love it. Um, and of course, in the description box, as always, I'll put the website for the Peninsula House. Make sure you check it out. Come pay a visit. We'd love to have you here. So this is the main terrace area outside. As you can see, it is just stunningly beautiful. And it opens onto this incredible vista of the beach. Again, it's just very quiet. Dinner is served on a patio. Uh, the tables are not yet set for dinner because it's still a little bit early, but they will be fully set. So you would just come around here and pick your place at one of the
tables and depending upon the occupancy, they put more tables together. But look at the art. Look at this. Every, every like no detail is left undone. Oh, hi. <laughs> if you come inside through one of the doors, you'll find the billiard room. <laughs> Just like in the game Clue, remember that? Uh, it's beautifully done. There are 16th century beautiful paintings from India on the walls. These are painted on glass. Look at this. Just lovely. And you have a nice quiet area inside, a study or a place to have a quiet conversation. Again, to look at the view outside. Now we're entering the library. You can come a rousing discussion. <laughs> if politics is your thing, this is probably the room for it. Look at this. Again, it reminds me of the game Clue. Remember that? This is the Clue House. <laughs> it's absolutely beautiful. Comfortable, luxurious, but definitely not stuffy. Look at the art. Okay, and as with any house, the heart of it is the kitchen. This is where some of the magic happens. Isn't it beautiful? Okay, so now we're gonna go take a look upstairs. So one of the first things you see when you come to the second floor is another spot for relaxing. One of the three libraries that are found here in the home and you'll find books from different languages. So again, there's something for everyone. It's all very comfortable. Looking out to the courtyard, Cross, you can see again out to the beautiful vista in the distance there. The wraparound patio, so each room has its own patio area, seating area, and so on. So you can, okay. you have the privacy of your own patio as well. Wonderful. And all the rooms have ocean view. All of the rooms have ocean view. Wow, spectacular. Once again, there it is. It's a bit of a cloudy day, but I don't think anybody would complain from this vantage point. So coming into this room here, this is an African style room. And it's called the Rocco room. It's a painting on the left, uh, which is painted by Carrie, actually. Ah, Carrie's an artist and the chef, one of the chefs here. So there's just a variety of really wonderful personal touches throughout the home. Don't you want to sleep in that bed? Be comfortable? Look at this. It's beautiful. That right there is a television that's covered up. And then you have dual entrances to the wraparound patio. Now we're going to do a quick peek of the bathroom of the African room. products they use here. Alright, now we're going to take a peek at the Asian themed, Asian inspired room. You can see clearly some influences here. Oh my goodness, look at this. Prayer tablets. Wow. Actually we have two sets to film at these Bibles. Beautiful. And then tell us about the special items over here. So this is Chinese money cabinet was my 18th birthday present to my mother. Mm. And this Indian xylophone was from my grandmother who had a shop in Paris. The first one in Paris started in 1950, specialized in Middle Eastern antiques. Wonderful, absolutely beautiful. Okay, and coming into another room here, you have a lovely sitting area just to relax. Put your feet up, take a nap. <laughs> and again, the uh, beautiful doors, dual passage through your wraparound balcony. And look at this bed, oh my gosh. 
gosh. Honeymoon, anyone? <laughs> Take you back and show you the bathrooms. Okay, so coming past the wardrobes here, your clothes will be carefully hung. Some of the larger bathrooms. You can sit and luxuriate in a nice bubble bath if you like that. Dual sinks, as you've seen. equipped shower. Look at the detail. Appreciate the fine detail. Right here we have a room which is sort of a Parisian theme. As you can see it's all very luxurious, quite quite comfortable. So we come into the bathroom, which is, has a Venetian theme. So this is the site of the swimming pool. As you can see, it's beautiful, it's tranquil, it's like an enchanted garden. But no children are allowed here. This is a place for adults to come relax and escape from reality. So you guys, I hope you enjoyed that. That's my really special um, showing for you of this place, the Peninsula House. Please do come and pay a visit. The people are wonderful here. You'll feel right at home. And uh, I think you will love it. Look around one more time. All right, Peninsula House, check them out.